This truck behind me came in for brakes, and we sure did brakes, because they were really bad. However, what we also found while we did brakes was... really, really bad wheel bearings. If your car or truck is in the same situation as this one, get your wheel bearings at oneauto.com. A bad wheel bearing can be easily heard when you're driving down the road because it's pretty loud. In our case, it was actually quiet. Couldn't hear a wheel bearing noise. However, when we brought it in and put it up on the lift, unloaded the suspension, well, that wheel bearing was really loud. Here we have a wheel bearing. This is actually the wheel bearing that's about to go on that truck in a few minutes. And I just wanted to briefly show you how it works just on a, a general scale so that you can understand how they can go bad. Now, this is the wheel bearing part of the bearing assembly. This is a bolt on wheel hub bearing assembly. And then this is the hub itself. In here, there are two sets of roller bearings and the hub spins inside the wheel bearing itself. This gets bolted onto the knuckles on the vehicle side, and then your brakes and wheel get stacked together here. So this is gonna be the exterior side, the wheel side. Now, the weight of that corner of the vehicle that is on the bearing, well, it's pressing straight down in here. The whole weight of the vehicle, or the knuckles suspension setup on that side will be transferred through this bearing as it spins. On this one, actually, we have an axle going through it as well, since this truck is four-wheel drive. So when you are in four-wheel drive, this is actually getting power supplied to it as well, pushing the vehicle forward. The two main reasons that wheel bearings go bad on most vehicles is one, if the seal fails. So they're supposed to be sealed units. There's grease inside there. If the seal fails, the grease comes out, water and debris get in. That doesn't really mix very well with metal. And well, yeah, that wheel bearing is gonna go bad pretty fast at that point. Number two is wear and tear. Whether it's excessive wear or normal wear, it's still wear. So basically, if it's a truck and you're hauling heavy, often trailers or big loads in the bed, or even if you're plowing, that front end has a lot of extra weight on it, you're putting excess pressure on those bearings, they will wear out prematurely. Number two is if you're off-roading or driving on unpaved roads, often all of those shocks from the wheels get transferred through the wheel bearings before they even reach your shock absorber. Of course, the tire is the first cushion that's there, but still, it goes through the wheel bearing. If you feel it in the car, it went through the wheel bearing. One more thing that is often overlooked is actually oversized wheel and tire setups, often on trucks. And yeah, sure, it might look good, but it puts a lot of extra stress on those wheel bearings. Everything that is on a vehicle, in this truck for example, everything was designed to have a factory wheel and tire setup. The wheel bearing, the springs, control arms, the gear ratio in the front end and the transmission, everything was designed for factory components. So now you're putting a bigger wheel and tire on, in most cases also with more poke, more offset, because it looks cool, why not? Well, in sticking out the wheel further and having a bigger wheel and tire overall in diameter on it, now you're getting into leverage. If I were to pry on this wheel underneath it, this pry bar, probably not gonna do anything at all. However, this one is going to probably do what I want it to do, because it has more leverage. Same theory applies here to wheels and tires that are oversized. They are prying on the wheel bearing more than a factory set of wheels and tires with the right size that was intended here. Now, you wanna keep that in mind because putting more stress on those wheel bearings will make them wear prematurely, especially when vehicles like this one in particular is known for having wheel bearings that fail pretty often actually. Obviously, you don't just put one bigger wheel and tire on. This thing has oversized wheels and tires all around. So we don't just have one bad wheel bearing, which you can hear. We have two. And that one's not as loud, but it's getting there. Now let's replace these bad wheel bearings with some brand new ones from oneauto.com. I just want to clarify that I don't personally see anything wrong with oversized wheels and tires. I think they look great. Everything I own is actually modified to some extent or another. But what I want to mention is that you want to know your vehicle's limits. If you're modifying it and let's say putting oversized wheels and tires on, you should check it periodically. Check it more often than you would if it didn't have that because it's going to put more wear and tear on it.